Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you're all having a wonderful start to your day, having a good week. And we're going to be in Ezra chapter 3 today. Ezra chapter 3. So if you have your Bible, why don't you turn there with me now. We're going to be starting in verse 1 and reading through verse 6. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, the people assembled together as one in Jerusalem. Then Joshua, son of Josedek, and his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and his associates, began to build the altar of the God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it, in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Despite their fear of the peoples around them, they built the altar on its foundation and sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord both the morning and evening sacrifices. Then in accordance with what is written, they celebrated the festival of tabernacles with the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day. After that, they presented the regular burnt offerings, the new moon sacrifices, and the sacrifices for all the appointed sacred festivals of the Lord, as well as those brought as free will offerings to the Lord. On the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, though the foundation of the Lord's temple had not yet been built or been laid. Amen. Amen. So here's what's going on. So the exiles are beginning to return to Jerusalem. And, and before they decide to do anything else, they decide to build the altar of the Lord so that sacrifices to the Lord could be made. They, they decided, in other words, to prioritize worship as a community. And, and this is rather extraordinary because the, the city walls had not yet been rebuilt. And if you know anything about the ancient Near East, you know that if, if a, a city did not have walls, if they did not have a way to protect themselves, then they were sitting ducks. That any surrounding nation or people group could come and, and attack them. They had no defense system. They had no walls to protect their city. And, and yet, even over against their own safety. They said, no, we want to prioritize worship. First things first, we want to worship the Lord. And, and you know, this is a, a principle that it should really be true for, for all churches and for all followers of Jesus, that our first priority is to worship the Lord. In, in times of suffering, in times of blessing, in the midst of a pandemic, our, our first priority should be to worship. And I love how Eugene Peterson defines worship. He said, Worship is the strategy by which we interrupt our preoccupation with ourselves and attend to the presence of God. Don't you love that? It's the strategy by which we interrupt our preoccupation with ourselves, constantly thinking about me and what I want and what I desire interrupt this preoccupation with ourselves and we attend to the presence of God. That is worship. And so let me ask you a question right now. Friend, are, are you prioritizing worship in your life right now? Not, not just on Sunday morning, of course. Of course, we, we love coming together or, or watching online and worshiping the Lord. But are, are you prioritizing worship in your life throughout the week? Perhaps it's in your car on your way to work or you put music on in the car and that, that you might worship, or perhaps it's as you make dinner that you have music in the background so that you're, you're able to refocus once again on the Lord and worship as you make dinner. Or perhaps it's before work that you have some, some quiet time set aside so that you can worship the Lord and, and refocus on Him. Are you prioritizing worship right now in your life? And you know, we we don't have to listen to, to music in order to worship. I, I hope you know that. Certainly we love worshiping the Lord via music, but, but that isn't the, the only avenue through which we can worship the Lord. You know, one of the, the easiest ways, most accessible ways to worship the Lord is, is through the Psalms. It's through the Psalms. And just this morning I, I was reading through Psalm 54 as part of my own devotional time. And, and you know, as you read through a psalm, you, you can just pick out those verses that that glorify the Lord and, and just, just repeat them back to Him. Make it your own. And so I was reading through Psalm 54 this morning, and I, I came to verse 4, and it says, Surely God is my help 
The Lord is the one who sustains me. And so I, I can just pray that back to the Lord. I thank you, Father, that you are my help. I thank you that this very week you have sustained me. I thank you for all of the different ways that you've come through for me this week. All of the answer prayer, all of the ways that you've encouraged me throughout this week. Thank you. And then I, I, I came to verse 6, which says, I will praise your name, Lord, for it is good. And so it just gives me an opportunity to say, Father, I, I praise your name. Jesus, I praise your name for it is good. You are kind and true and just and merciful and I love you. Friends, worship, again, is a strategy by which we interrupt our preoccupation with ourselves and attend to the presence of God. Worship needs to be our first priority. It was the first priority of the Israelites, even though their, their city walls had not yet been rebuilt, and it should be the first priorities in our own lives as well. Amen. Amen. Hope that was encouraging for you, and I will talk to you soon.